beats and bloggers. Stay with Gemma as she gets the latest from the UAE's biggest influencers. Today I welcome on the show Loi Sahi. Thanks for coming in. Hey Emma, thank you so much for having me. Now, straight up, I've got to ask about your cooking style. So last week you said you couldn't come in, you were cooking it, uh, or cooking, you were doing a cooking demo. Now I just went and watched it. It was not at all what I expected. You were blindfolded to start with, so how does that work? Yeah, I'm, I'm very severe with my guests on this show. Well, I wouldn't say I had a cooking style because it was my first cooking experience that I put on a show. Uh, so it was just the idea of uh, gathering a bunch of friends uh, and influencers and uh, would have fun around uh, food. And Ramadan is the perfect occasion to, to give ideas for food and have fun together. So it's more about um, chilling, having fun, doing challenges uh, and dares. And then maybe the, the cooking part is more as a background yeah, uh, of the show. Yeah, I see that. And certainly you are you are a daredevil. You're blindfolded. And I saw an electrical device involved. I was, <laughs> it made me really yeah. nervous. Yeah, most of my guests blocked me. And I'm trying to get uh, back their friendship, but it's a bit hard. <laughs> so I also saw another one of your cooking shows. It was with your sister. And this looked more like a food fight. Yeah, my, my mom forced me to have her on the show. <laughs> so I, I had to do that. <laughs> no, Sandra is... Uh, we have an amazing relationship, my sister and I, and um, it was one of the best episodes because we have that chemistry that mm. we have in real life. And uh, on the show, it just shows very, very uh, easily to the audience. And uh, yeah, the idea was that I had to speak and she put her arms um, from behind and she had to cook what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a mess. <laughs> so the cheesecake, then that was obviously totally mocked up. That was bought in. Or did you pre-prepare it? Well, now that the show is almost over, I can say some secrets. <laughs> we Please, pre- we spill pre- the beans. We prepared this cake in advance because we know we're both crazy on set and we were scared <laughs> not to reach the, the end result. Yes. So yeah, uh, it was a, a prepared cake. <laughs> so can you cook? I can now. I can now. Yeah, only desserts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and only the recipes from the show. (laughs) Suits me. I've got a sweet tooth. Now, your little sister, Sandra, she's also a YouTuber. Do you guys often collaborate or was this cooking show first off? No, this is how it started. I I started on on YouTube and um, uh, I I, I was always with my friends and family and Sandra was always with me in these videos. So uh, people who know me, they know my sister on my platform. Then she started her own platform and she's much more talented than me. She sings, she's vlogging, she's beautiful, which I'm not. Uh, singing, I mean. <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah, so, so we always collaborate when she needs me on her platform, when I need her on mine. And we're very different. We have different styles, but it always works. But exactly, you, you say you've got such a varied skill set between the two of you. So it makes it very interesting content. Yeah. And um, is there a bit of sibling rivalry that goes on? Uh, not at all. No, no, we never had that. We have a 10, 10 years difference uh, mm. in, in age, uh, which which ha- which allows us to have a certain maturity about each other. So there is no competition whatsoever. We're, we're very friendly with it. No, with each I'm other. not even with the pranks. Um, <laughs> no. You don't want to get her back for spilling your face. In that <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if one day she do, she's doing a show, I would I should be scared. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Watch out. She's coming <laughs> back. <laughs> uh, payback. Um, and you just mentioned so she's a beautiful singer. Yeah. And I haven't seen any videos of you singing, so I'm guessing Sandra was the only one to inherit that gift. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I never tried to sing, and um, it's it's not one of my interests. And uh, well, I tried, I tried, but it never worked out. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, you're still in training. <laughs> yeah. We're all learning. <laughs> we are live on Instagram, Dance FM at UAE. I'll be right back with Loi Sahi. Beats and bloggers. Stay with Gemma as she gets the latest from the UAE's biggest influencers. I'm back with Loi Sahi and he's a massive YouTube star, over 1.4 million subscribers. Obviously a natural with a stage personality to entertain and uh, engage. But I want to ask how much has your multicultural background helped to diversify your audience? Wow, that's a, that's a good question. It, help, it helps in anything. Uh, I think to have uh, a lot of cultures going on in your personality but uh, what we do is sharing ideas and um, 
the more cultures you have in you, the more uh, options you have to deliver the same message to different people. So um, I think it just gives me a lot of uh, ways to express myself, even if it's, for example, all my content is in Arabic, but I might think in French, uh, think in English or Dutch, uh, and then deliver in Arabic. Um, so it, it helped me in, in a lot of things, even on a personal level, on a social level, not only on social media. I can't, yes, I can't even imagine Sahi, um, Lohi, sorry. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, because you grew up in Iraq, then yeah. you moved to Tunisia, you studied in Belgium, uh, you also lived briefly in Jordan. Yeah. So all these experiences have shaped you yeah, and exactly. helped you to relate to a huge spectrum of an audience. Yeah, exactly, because um, you get too open to the world and there's a huge difference between staying in one country, even if it's a good country or big country, but moving around you can you can see how people live differently, uh, sense things differently, and uh, um, people have different struggles, uh, different uh, dreams, goals, expectations, and when you see all this uh, uh, big range of uh, of let's say criteria in people mm. you get to understand um, the biggest picture of the society you live in and this helps you to know how to make people laugh or uh, how sometimes you have to filter yourself or um, um, it's really opened up your awareness you know, yeah you know when we live in a very beautiful country but you know also that uh, most of people don't so you, you mm. have also to find the balance um, so when I show beautiful places, I I set it more as a dream for people to reach it than, oh, look, you know, I live in a beautiful country. So there's always a balance that you have to find. Yeah, so you're trying to give others around the globe hope for yeah. their ambitions, education, their lives ahead. This leads me to my next question. So in November 2016, you uh, created, directed a short film called Places. And this was your whole message about why you started vlogging. So how much today does Zara's story motivate you? Yeah, so I, I started as a co comedian on, on Snapchat and uh, I, it went viral back in the day. And then um, I received a message from this girl, Zahra, uh, in Iraq. She, she was sick uh, from cancer and her dream was to see Dubai. Um, so without even thinking, I, I bought a camera and I decided to show her Dubai. Um, I did this this beautiful vlog. It was my first vlog ever on YouTube. So I posted it and it went viral. And she was very, very happy with it, but also all the people who saw it. So the love of people, the comment of people kept me doing um, vlogs. And they made me discover that I had maybe something uh, to share on YouTube. Um, and, and the story of Zahra keeps going every day because uh, it's all about impacting people. Um, even if you don't have a problem, if you laugh, mm. uh, watching me, I created an impact that gives me energy uh, to, to keep doing what I'm doing. Yes, a huge impact, because don't they say laughter is the best medicine, so that's what you feel you can offer people. And I'm the doctor. <laughs> Yeah. Oh god, that sounds like a creepy doctor. <laughs> so how much has your content changed since you first started out? Uh, it, changed, it changes a lot because uh, in our field we have to, to be aware of the trends, but we also um, try to set our own trend. Um, so you, you, you sometimes need to go with the flow, sometimes you have to be different. Mm. And so it's, an, uh, it's a bit frustrating because every day we have questions about what we should do um, to entertain people mm. and what should I do to deliver a message but without being boring um, so it changes a lot so I've been through uh, uh, traveling uh, comedy like pure comedy sketches mm. um, life coaching um, a lot of, of different type of shows like the cooking show I did a, a show on TV so I've been through different styles on YouTube I see you've also got a whole video album dedicated to as you put it self enhancement so yeah. this covers a huge range of subjects, uh, health, uh, happiness, work-life balance, family values. Can we expect more of this in the future? Because it's quite a shift from your natural uh, humorous personality. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just to be clear, I'm not a professional life coach or, or I, I haven't, re I don't really have uh, the experience of a professional, but what I have found out um, when I started on my channel, uh, I I had people following me from countries who didn't have tools uh, that we have and they didn't have access to a lot of things that we take for granted. 
So uh, I started motivating these people with small, small things, small details, small ambitions, and uh, um, and people loved it. So I started to enhance my myself to impact people. So I started to read a book every week, and then whatever I read in this book, I discuss it with my audience. So I became a better person through trying helping other people. And uh, I actually I really admire this because you. You're aware of your influencer status, and you are trying to really uh, help, you know, benefit your lis- uh, listeners, your audience, your fans through um, some really valuable life lessons. I think. Yeah. It's, a, it's an awesome. Obviously, aside from your humorous, you know, takes, that's awesome. But then people probably want to see a more serious side to you. So this is a completely different uh, uh, perspective of you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And especially when when you know that some some people in some regions they they need role model like we needed role models at their age, and I I think it's very important to be uh, to be conscious that you're responsible about what you say and what you do because a lot of people look up to you, um, as I look up to other people's also on the same platform. So it's like a cycle, and and we we try to to build a better society. That's all best values you can have. Thank you so much, Larry Sahi, for joining me on the show. Check our full interview at dancefm.com. Dance.